Chris Heron played two years in the NBA. Recently, his story was portrayed in the ESPN 30 for 30 film, Unguarded. Heron was on the UT campus in July to discuss his rise to stardom, struggles with drug addiction, and journey in recovery. Members of the football team were in attendance. Over the last three years, I've traveled all over the country sharing my story in hopes of making a difference. And I share it for many, many reasons. But one of the reasons is because as an athlete, I was afforded so many opportunities to walk into rooms like you just walked in tonight and to listen to a man like me tell a story. And I sat in my seat and I chose not to listen. I sat in my seat and I said, I'm ranked ninth in the United States in basketball. I'm a McDonald's All-American. I've scored 2,000 points. I'm being recruited by Texas, Kentucky, Duke. All I do is drink and smoke, man. I'll never be that guy. I had the nerve to judge. I had the nerve not to listen. But I truly believe that night that that story, that that story didn't pertain to me. And how ironic it was that night as I'm walking out of that gymnasium with two of my teammates talking about meeting up later that night to drink and smoke. I walked into my first college drug test knowing I was gonna test positive for marijuana and cocaine, which I did. I failed my second test for cocaine in my third month and my third test for cocaine in my fourth. Four months into this promising basketball career, I was called into my athletic director's office. He sat me down, he looked at me and he said, Christopher, we don't care that you were McDonald's All-American just featured in Sports Illustrated, that your dad's a politician in this state. We care about this campus. And obviously it's not a good fit for you. So we've decided today not to suspend you for one season. We've decided today to take your scholarship away and send you home. You are no longer welcome on the campus of Boston College. Security is outside our office. They're gonna escort you back to your room, pack your bags up, and be off campus by the end of the day. As I walked back to my dorm room with security to pack my bags, I said to myself at 18 years old, I can't believe four months earlier, I had the nerve to stare at my phone, laugh at the man who just told the same story. That next morning when I woke up without a scholarship on my parents' couch, my dad threw the Boston Globe and the Boston Herald at me, my face on the cover of both papers, one said cocaine, the other one said what a shame. Kid who I've known since I was six walked into my backyard, tapped me on my shoulder and he said, Chris, take a walk with me, man. So I took a walk. I walked around the front of my house and he said, remember we were in high school and every once in a while we could get our hands on Vicodins and Percocets? Of course, man. There's a new pill. It's like taking five in one shot. He pulled out a Ziploc bag. In that Ziploc bag were these little yellow pills. He said, these are 40 milligram Oxycontin. They're $20. Do you want to try one? I looked at that Ziploc bag at 22 years old. I reached in my pocket, I handed him a $20 bill. He dropped that little yellow pill in the palm of my hand. I looked at it and I laughed. I said, are you for real, dog? $20 for this little thing? <laughs> I threw it into my mouth. I went back to my cookout, man. I had no idea that that decision that day at 22 years old was about to change my life forever. I had no idea that that 40 milligram pill would eventually turn to 1,600 milligrams a day. I had no idea I'd wake up taking 1080s and I'd go to bed taking 1080s. I had no idea that the $20 I spent that day, that that $20 was gonna turn to $25,000 a month Oxycontin habit. I had no idea, man. At 24 years old, I became an intravenous drug addict. At 24 years old, I never went back to that little yellow pill. Six years earlier, I walked into a room like you did tonight. All I do is drink and smoke, man. I'll never be that guy. At 27 years old, I tried to kill myself. At 27 years old, I didn't want to live like that no more. 32 years old, I said to myself, I'm gonna end this nightmare for everybody involved. I'm walking to my homeboy's house, I'm grabbing his gun, I'm sticking in my mouth and I'm blowing my head off today. Today I will shoot myself, today I will die. And today, I'll get out of all my family's way. And as I'm walking out thinking about suicide, this nurse keeps yelling my name, asking me to come back. When I turn around, she's in her 50s, I wave her off, I keep walking. She said, please don't wave me off. I went to high school with your mom. My mom died at a young age. I turned around, I looked at that woman, I said, please don't bring up my mom, man. She said, I got no choice, because your mom's talking to me right now. 
telling me not to let our little baby leave this hospital. So please come in and let me do your mom that favor and try to get you some help. I turned around, I walked back in, I sat with this nurse crying my eyes out as I listened to her call treatment centers all over New England saying I got a former Boston Celtic with no money, no job, two children. Will you please give him a free bed? Everybody said no. So they kept me for six days. On day six, I was being discharged, still sick, thinking about getting high. As I'm walking out, a guy I played in the NBA with that you might see on ESPN now. His name was Chris Mullen. I lived with Chris Mullen to get ready for the NBA draft. Chris Mullen and his wife were on the other line and they said, we know what you're going through, man. We understand it. We want to send you away for six months. Will you please take a gift? We have the resources. I took the Mullen family's gift. I've been married for 15 years. I've been sober for almost five. My children have reaped the reward of a sober dad. My family and my life has changed. I've never, ever been more proud to be me 24-7. I've been shaving and brushing my teeth in the shower. Tonight, today, I did it in front of the mirror for the first time in 14 years. Because I can finally look at myself, man. Mirrors don't lie, so I stayed away from it. Boston Celtics, Rolling Stone Magazine, Sports Illustrated, big cars, big houses didn't bring me that peace. Recovery did. One day at a time did. I've never met one drug addict in my life that told me they started with the crack and the heroin, man. We all start off in the dorm room blowing blunt, saying we'll never turn into guys like me. Believe that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart coming to your campus and inviting me. So thank you. God bless. It's almost inspiring just seeing somebody up here going through all that, talking to you, just kind of lets you know what, what, what other people's lives are like and you never know what's going on in other people's lives and just to see the struggle and him making it through that is just almost inspiring to someone just that you can, that you can be yourself and you can be you and, and, and make it to where you want to and have a, have a good life. The power of one is special and if, if one person was reached in that crowd tonight, you know, it's, it's, it's all worth it.